Our first lesson, which will also serve as our sermon text for this morning, comes from 1 Kings chapter 10. The Queen of Sheba heard about Solomon's fame, which was connected with the fame of the Lord. So she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great entourage, with camels carrying spices and a large quantity of gold and precious stones. She came to Solomon and told him everything that was on her heart. Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. The queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, the house which he built, and the food on his table. When she saw the council meeting of his officials, the careful attention of his ministers, as well as their attire, his cupbearers, and the whole burnt offering which he offered at the house of the Lord, it took her breath away. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your accomplishments and your wisdom is true. I did not believe the report until I came and saw it with my own eyes. The truth is, not even half of it was told to me. Your wisdom and wealth surpass the report which I heard. Blessed are your men. Blessed are your servants who stand before you continually hearing your wisdom. May the Lord your God be blessed, who was pleased to put you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loves Israel forever, he made you king to administer justice and righteousness. The word of our Lord. Let us begin with prayer, asking God to bless us in the meditation of his word. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Our Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. And grace and peace be to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't know about you, but I love riddles. I love thinking really hard and deeply and logically trying to find the solution to these hard questions and riddles. It takes a certain wisdom to understand and answer riddles. And I like to think that I'm pretty good at it. For instance, my wife and I were traveling one day in the car and we wanted the drive to go a little bit quicker. And so she pulled up some riddles on her phone and started asking me. I answered all the riddles pretty much right away, some even before she finished. Drive didn't go too much faster. Let's just say we're not going to do that again for a while. But as smart as I am with solving riddles, and as, as smart as Solomon is even wiser. There has been, nor will there be anyone as wise as Solomon. And what makes Solomon so wise is not that he was able to answer the hard questions or riddles or how he governed the nation of Israel. His true wisdom is something that anyone can have. Solomon, Solomon's true wisdom is something that you can and actually do have. For us to know how Solomon was so wise, we need to go back a few chapters from our sermon text, back to chapter 3 of 1 Kings. There Solomon is a bit younger. He just took the crown of the throne and he replaced his father, David. You probably know King David. You know that he is the probably the best king Israel had. Does no one else really like him? He left some pretty big shoes for his son Solomon to fill. Now Solomon was timid in taking the crown and following his father David. And so the Lord came to him to give him confidence and encouragement. And he told him to ask for anything that he would like to have. And the Lord would give it to him. He could have asked for wealth. He could have asked for his 
enemies or the surrounding nations around him to be destroyed. Instead, he asked for wisdom. He asked for a discerning heart in order to, ad- to govern and rule God's people rightly. Perhaps Solomon was fairly wise already at a young age. But then we heard from the Lord right after as his answer, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but of discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been nor anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And Solomon, he was a wise and prosperous king. Solomon had over 3,000 proverbs or wise sayings. He composed over 1,000 songs. And it was during his reign that this magnificent temple of the Lord was built so grand that the people of Israel longed for such a temple again, especially when they came back from captivity. Solomon also built a wonderful palace for himself, and both of these buildings were furnished with splendid splendid furniture, gilded with gold even. It was also during Solomon's reign that Israel grew to its highest They had the most prosperity and the largest territory that they ever had. Solomon's fame was so great that it started to spread to the surrounding nations. And it traveled as far as Sheba. I don't really expect you to know where Sheba is, because even the experts have some dispute. They they argue where it exactly is. It could be either just, just south of Egypt, but probably more likely, and what I think, it's actually the southern tip of the peninsula, of Arabian Peninsula by Yemen. Now, I don't expect you guys really to know where all that is either, but what we do know for sure, and what's important to know, is that Sheba was a far ways away, and yet the fame of Solomon came all the way there to the queen of Sheba. She heard, and then she traveled a long distance of Sheba traveled that long distance, she asked Solomon all the hard questions that were on her mind and on her heart. She didn't withhold any questions from him. And Solomon answered them all. There was not one question that he didn't understand. And he was able to explain it all to her. Then the queen of Sheba went and saw Solomon's palace saw how he ran the nation of Israel. She saw the temple of the Lord. And after seeing all of that, she just had to say, the report I heard in my own country about your accomplishments and your wisdom is true. I did not believe the report until I came and saw it with my own eyes. The truth is, not even half of it was told to me. Your wisdom and wealth surpassed reports which I heard. The Queen of Sheba came, she saw, and she was far impressed with what she saw, so much so that it took her breath away. The Queen of Sheba, though, wasn't necessarily impressed by Solomon the man. She was more impressed with the Lord. See, Solomon's fame and his reputation and name, it was all connected with the Lord's name, with his fame and reputation. Everything that Solomon had was because of the Lord. And the Queen of Sheba understood this. She believed that Solomon was a somebody because the Lord made him great and important. The Queen of Sheba believed that it was the Lord who placed Solomon as king. And then she praised God for it, even saying that God loves his people Israel for placing such a wise king on the throne to administer justice 
and righteousness to his people. I know Solomon was wise, even wiser than the wise men that we heard in our gospel text today. But even so, these wise men from Matthew chapter 2, they were learned men. They probably had government jobs in their own country. They were thought as wise and important people from where they came from. But is it very wise, at least to us, that after seeing a star, they packed up what they had and traveled? They went all the way to Israel. And once they arrived there, they went to the capital of Jerusalem, seeking the king of the Jews, only to discover that he was actually in the town of Bethlehem. And then they went to Bethlehem, looking for the king of the Jews, only to find this young child instead. But they believed. They knew that this child was the Messiah. They brought to him gifts fit for a king. They worshipped this young child as the king of the Jews. The king of kings as the Lord of all. These wise men did the wisest thing that they could have done. They traveled to see that, followed, they traveled following that star to see the Christ, and they believed in him. I've been talking a lot about wisdom and what it looks like to do wise things. That the wise men were wise, that Solomon was wise, that the queen of Sheba was wise in what she perceived. But this is not what the, the world would call wisdom. The world's wisdom is more not so much about being intelligent and smart as much as, as it is to outsmart others. The world's wisdom applauses when a worker is able to ruin the reputation of his co-workers yet keeping his name clean and clear so he can get ahead in the job. The world's wisdom says that it's not wrong or illegal to do anything unless you get caught. In fact, if you are able not to get caught, then you are pretty wise to work around the law. And the world's wisdom would have you think that it's best if you're intelligent enough not to have to rely on a supernatural being, a higher form of life, an intelligent designer. See, the world's wisdom is trying to outsmart and push God out of the picture and his word. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is not what wisdom really looks like. Solomon describes for us what true wisdom really is. In the first chapter of Proverbs, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise, all these things. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction. True wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. It's believing in the Lord. The Queen of Sheba, she too had true wisdom. She had the fear of the Lord. We saw this with her response at the end, but if we don't want to take the Queen of Sheba's words for herself, we hear Jesus make reference to her as the Queen of of the south when he said the queen of the south will be raised up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon but one even greater than Solomon is here her rising at the judgment to condemn that generation it was also said of the heathen Ninevites who did repent from Jonah's preaching for they feared the Lord as well. 
both of these people, the Queen of Sheba, the Ninevites, Solomon, the wise men, they fear the Lord and they had true wisdom. And not only did the Queen of Sheba fear the Lord, but this also then caused her to travel that great distance, the ends of the earth, Jesus said, to hear Solomon's wisdom. But now one even greater than Solomon has come. That same someone that the wise men traveled so far to see, to give gifts and to worship. Solomon, the queen of Sheba, the wise men, they had true wisdom, for they feared the Lord. And this true wisdom is not exclusive. It's not limited to a select few. It's not limited to just one person like Solomon. And it's not just limited to one nation like the Israelites. True wisdom is for all people. It's for you and me. To fear the Lord, to believe in Him, is for Israelites and Gentiles, non-Israelites alike, like you and me. And yes, God promised Abraham and his descendants to be God's chosen people from whom the Savior of the world would come from. But the benefits of the Savior of the world is for all people. It's for all nations. Jesus told his disciples to make disciples of all nations. Jesus sent Paul out especially to the Gentiles. And Paul preached that the Gentiles too receive the blessings from Jesus saving the world. And so the Lord God, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of the Israelites, is your Lord and God. In fearing in Him, in believing in Him, you receive all the promises that God has promised and a wisdom that far exceeds that of the world's wisdom. Through faith in the Lord, your sins are forgiven. You have a new life now and forever in heaven. And you can continue fearing and gaining wisdom as you hear the wisdom of the Lord through His Word. I think it's only fitting for me to end with a riddle for this sermon. One that will show if you're truly wise or not. One that most people can't answer correctly. What must you do to be saved? Answer? Fear the Lord. Believe that it's nothing that you have or could ever do. Believe that Jesus has already done it all for you. Amen.